Hello and welcome to the MLB DFS Slate Breakdown for Tuesday, April 2nd. We are back. We got an interesting slate here. Uh, yesterday's was a wild one and we will go through that perfect lineup and the winning lineups from yesterday's slate. And then after that, we will go into pitching on both slates and the stacks to uh, consider. So before we get into that, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our videos. It helps us a ton, just improve that reach and allow us to give more content out for free. Now, let's uh, get into it a little bit, shall we? So getting right over, get over to the perfect lineup first. All right. Oh, it brought me over to, uh, there we go. All right. So we got the perfect lineup. Seven games yesterday. Blanco is in the perfect lineup on DraftKings. Put up 47.5 in his no-hitter bid at only 6,500. So congrats to him. Great work. And then uh, Huck went up uh, and put up 35.7. So another great outing by him. And we got a three-man Astro stack, two-man Dodger. Uh, a lot of correlation in that perfect lineup, so you know the winning lineup likely has even more correlation in the winning lineup on DraftKings. We got Blanco, we got Huck, and then we have a five-man Houston stack, two-man Boston, one Yankee. So uh, the classic 5-2-1, we saw that lineup construction win a ton last year, and it's back so far again this year and doing well already. Uh, this guy was a probably 150 maxer because it's showing us here that he's entered 119 lineups. Uh, now getting over to FanDuel perfect lineup. We got uh, Blanco and then a three-man Houston stack, no other uh, correlation there with the winning lineup on FanDuel being Tanner Huck. And it was a, they only had one Houston player, which was Tucker, who just went absolutely nuts. Two-man Yankee stack, two-man Cardinal stack uh, with Freddie Freeman as well. So interesting. Oh, two man Boston too. So it was a two, two, two lineup construction with two one offs and the guy just absolutely nailed the right hitters. Uh, what was interesting to me is Juan Soto do, didn't do much. Nolan Gorman didn't do much, but uh, they're still able to get there. So congrats, uh, congrats to them. And they were able to win by 2.1 points. So had a, had a little bit of a cushion there as well. Now let's get into this slate. So we do have weather concerns on this slate. Watch uh, this first game for sure. I think the both Chicago games are likely fine, but uh, we do need to watch out for this Mets game. It could go either way. Looks like there is a break in the weather around uh, game time, but it's raining pretty much all day there, so who knows the field conditions. All right, uh, getting over to DraftKings, and we will start out on the pitchers. High-owned pitcher is Luis Castillo, then Brian Bello and Javier Assad. Starting on uh, Castillo, look, it is Luis Castillo, guys, absolute studly. Uh, don't mind going here. My issue, though, is that this is not a very good matchup. Cleveland strikes out 17% versus righties. As it is, Castillo's K rate isn't, you know, that big. Only 25.4, meaning his combined K rate is only 21.3. Just a, not a great spot for upside. Now, he is a very, very good pitcher. Uh, but I don't love the spot for him, especially at higher ownership. I am getting to some Castillo, but I'm just not going to get to a ton. Rayon Bello next, 8K. Uh, pitched decent in his first game. Five innings. What, two runs, two strikeouts. That K, The Ks just weren't really there, but that was against Seattle. He now has Oakland, Major League Baseball's favorite punching bag. 27% K rate versus righties. So even though 
Bellow only has an 18% K rate, is in an elite spot, 24% combined K rate. I am extremely interested in Bellow. And at this point, the A's look so bad that I'm probably going to pick on them all season long. His stat cast data looks okay. A uh, decent amount of hard contact, but hey, that was, you know, against Seattle, not Oakland. So I, uh, I'm i definitely going to be getting some, some bellow. The ownership does not matter to me. Javier Assad, uh, he is cheap. So... You know, that's at least interesting. It is versus a Rockies team that's not that good, especially when they're away. Uh, but I'm still probably not going to get to that much. So the big, the weird thing here is 38% K rate over his last five starts, but 22% over the last 20. And then if you look at his spring training data, he's striking out less than a batter in any. And so this 38%, I just don't think is right. I think it is much closer to 22% and he is just performing extremely well here. So our uh, combined K rate does definitely emphasize the last five starts a little bit more than the last 20. So I wouldn't look too much into that 33.9 number there either. But uh, I mean, this Rocky team does strike out a lot, 27% K rate. So there is some upside there. It's very cool temperatures in uh, Wrigley too, but the wind is blowing out pretty hard. So I think that kind of cancels out some of that wind factor, except for on fly balls that kind of get up there. Uh, all in all, I'm not sold on, on uh, Assad. He's cheap. The value is a little low uh, with our projection. I don't love it. Probably not going to be getting too much of him. Shane Bieber, I am absolutely interested in. Yes, it was Oakland that he played. Uh, so I wouldn't read too much into that 11 uh, Ks. However, we've seen the guy in the past really put it together. He, uh, I know, was working hard in the offseason. Maybe this is for real. And Seattle is at least striking out 24% versus righties. Uh even though Bieber's K rate the last couple of years has been way lower, I uh, I do think he can bounce back a little bit and bring that K rate back up. I mean, he was a 30% K rate guy, and now he's down to 20. Could he bounce back this year? Absolutely. So I'm absolutely intrigued by Bieber. And we know it is a contract year for him too. So I don't mind getting some and just hoping that, you know, new Bieber is real. The Bieber fever could be back. Uh, you Darvish. I'm absolutely interested in you Darvish in this matchup. One thing I do have to worry about, though, 78 pitches last game, 72 the game before. You know, maybe he's at mid-80s uh, this game. I don't expect him to get up to 100s, but he is a very uh, efficient pitcher. I think he still can get to six innings on 80 pitches. He just, you know, has to be locked in and, Frankly, he's been fairly good so far. Uh, Dodgers allowed only one run versus the Giants allowed one run. I don't mind going back. 24% uh, K rate for him. His K rate is 24. Combined is 24. It's an interesting spot to attack this uh, St. Louis lineup that's been decent so far. Not really liking Framber. Not really liking... Uh, Gallon, not really liking Webb today. Uh, I do have a little interest in Ronaldo Lopez, uh, but I'm not going to go crazy. Braves just have a way of making a guy pop that I am interested in, but heavily concerned with his pitch count, what it will be. He was a reliever, and they're making him a starter, so definitely a little concerned there. All in all, I'm pretty much probably sticking to these uh, top guys. Now, getting over to FanDuel, our pitchers here, high-owned. We got Javier aside. Uh, that's just optim optimizer speak. I wouldn't really be going there too much. Luis Castillo, he is absolutely fine. Just don't love his ownership. I do like Bieber quite a bit, as I talked about. Bello and Darvish. That's probably where most of my ownership is and Castillo, these four guys on uh, on FanDuel. So I'm probably not going to be getting too wild. Uh, 
Nestor is a little bit interesting. The Diamondbacks are worse versus lefties. Strike out a little bit more. ISO is lower. Woba's, you know, 306. So if you want to attack the Diamondbacks, it is with a lefty. So Nestor fits that category a little bit. Don't uh, don't absolutely hate it. Once again, though, pitch count is a worry. He went 76 last game. Um, but he pitched decently. Uh, he had a rough first inning and then was good after that. So he settled in. I don't mind going there. Houston offense is extremely good. So I got to give him a little bit, bit of a pass there. All right. Now let's get into some stacks. Bing bong. All right. So. Start on uh, highest owned, no surprise. It is the Atlanta Braves today. I think they are in a very good spot. I like them a ton on this slate. Look, Garrett uh, Crochet was very, very good last game. And I think he is a exciting, talented young pitcher. This Braves offense is just dis different though. And the relief pitching for the White Sox is just terrible. Combine that with hard wins blowing out. And I'm intrigued to go to uh, cro uh, pick against Crochet and go to the Braves. Not too worried about that ownership. And this is, you know, the top five lineup or five hitters in the lineup. You sprinkle in some later tier guys and that ownership drops down quickly. So very interested in a Braves stack. Uh, Boston's popping up against Alex Wood. Absolutely you know, considering that and Oakland is another bullpen that isn't very good. Wood also is a guy that usually doesn't work very deep in a game. So you get extra bullpen time there. Red Sox offense has been hot. Definitely interested in going to them at a little less ownership. Uh, the Giants are popping up as a higher owned team. And frankly, I think they're probably going a little higher owned than they should. Uh, the pitcher is likely to be uh, Gavin Stone today for the Dodgers. He was supposed to be their fifth pitcher. I'm not totally sure why it isn't announced. I don't know if there's an issue going on with uh, Stone that I don't know about. But if it is Gavin Stone, he is a very, very good pitcher. Last season, coming into the uh, season, you know, everybody was talking about Gavin Stone over Bobby Miller. And we saw Bobby Miller just go out and pitch great this in his first start this year. He pitched great last year. And now everybody's talking about Bobby Miller over Gavin Stone. But, hey, we only have, you know, a little bit of a sample size of these two guys in the major leagues. Gavin Stone could be every bit as good as Bobby Miller. So I don't love trying to pick on Gavin Stone in this spot. I think uh, I think is the ownership on the Giants is just going a little, little higher owned than it should. However, we don't really know who the Dodgers pitcher is yet. It is likely Stone, though. Uh, Cubs popping up against Freebomb makes total sense to me. Winds are blowing out. We know Wrigley affected big time by winds. It is cool temperatures, though, so that ball won't fly quite as well uh, with the winds. But, hey, when you get 20-mile-an-hour uh, winds at Wrigley, there's a chance for home runs and definitely intrigued to attack that. Cardinals are popping up versus Darvish. I don't love that uh, stack whatsoever. Now, our highest projected ones, we got the Braves, we got the Dodgers, we got Houston, we got the Cubs. It's pretty much all the per the best offenses on this slate that are popping up with good reason. Uh, one thing I got to say about Webb is he doesn't give up too many really blow up games. And that's what you need for uh, a Dodger stack to really work. I think the smaller Dodger stacks in this matchup probably make a little more sense than the full five man. So the two, three mans, I would probably be leaning into a little bit more than the full five. Uh, Houston, Jose Barrios is kind of hit or miss and he's not quite as good away as he is at home. So definitely slightly intrigued with Houston and Yankees versus gallon. I don't love it, but uh, Hey, they could probably get to anybody this year. Now, value stack wise. So Toronto is popping up versus Valdez. Valdez is another pitcher that generally doesn't get blown up. He may have poor outings, 
but a blow up generally doesn't happen. And there's decent relief, relief pitching behind Valdez. So I don't love going to Toronto. It's another spot where I likely only go smaller stacks. May have a couple big stacks, but not really the focus. Oakland's popping up a little bit. Honestly, I really like Bello. I'm probably not going to have much uh, Oakland. There is at least a little bit of a leverage stack as, uh, aspect with them. So I won't throw it out completely. Ceiling wise, Atlanta, New York, Houston, all popping up. I do want to shout out the Padres in this matchup a little bit. Mikolas isn't that great. Uh, allowing a decent amount for the fantasy points per plate attempt. And don't mind going there. These guys aren't that pricey, and there's a lot of different ways they can score. Uh, Mikolas also allows a decent amount of stolen bases, so it gives a little more upside to the guys like Tease and Kim that can really uh, swipe a couple bags. I also think there is going to be some leverage with the uh, Padres as they will go low-owned. And highest leverage stack, we have Cleveland versus Castillo. Makes sense. Castillo is one of the highest owned pitchers and means nobody's going to go to Cleveland. While Cleveland is a good offense, Castillo is another one that doesn't really get blown up much. Can he? Absolutely. But uh, I'm not banking on it. So I'm probably not playing much Cleveland in this spot. But uh, you totally can. Now, let's go to highest FIPS. Uh, Freeland. Got to pick on free bomb a little bit. Uh, Casey Mize is popping up a little as well. But remember, this game has big time weather issues. And hitting wise, uh, splits fantasy point versus plate attempt is going in the Dodgers, Braves, Houston category. Uh, however, if you scroll down, Padres start uh, popping up a little bit as well. So all of those guys are interesting. I uh, did want to mention on FanDuel that the leverage stacks are quite a bit different due to ownership. Uh, and there is some interesting stuff. I, I, uh, oh, it looks like it updated since I was last. Uh, this Padre stack was popping up a lot more on the leverage tool. But uh, Houston popping for leverage here versus Jose Barrios, which is extremely intriguing for me. Um, now that'll do it for today. Good luck guys. Let's win some money and have a good one. Bye.